Greg, we're talking K Rock. We're talking 1986. We are talking songs 30 to 21. Are you all set? I'm set. Okay. I, I was a K Rock listener then. All right. It was a preset in my, what was I, in my white 1974 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. <laughs> Perfect. I see a surfboard hanging out the window. No, <laughs> never surfed. Never surfed. Skated. Just skate. Skate, skated and boogie boarded, but never, never surfed. And what, what Craig, was it? Can't surf. Yeah, what, no. what was a typical day like for Craig Rosen in 1986? 86. I'm, I'm thinking I was a, a graduate at that point of uh, Cal State Northridge. Uh, and I was working at the uh, LA Daily News. Uh, gee, driving into work, right? Thinking, yeah, yeah. Listening to Working, K. Yeah, listening. Yeah, I'd, li I'd listen to K. Rock. Was it? Uh, who was doing the morning show at that point? Do you probably, remember? Probably, uh, uh, Ray, probably, um, Ramondo and Richard. I think probably before Richard Blade. Could be Ramondo and the Blade back then, because uh, could be. As, yeah, Kevin and Bean didn't start till the 1990s. Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah, it was. A little, I wasn't covering radio quite yet then. Uh, so yeah, uh, there was a radio guy at, at Daily News. Who was that? Uh, before I did it uh, back then, it might have been this guy named Martin Boo. Okay. Uh, might I? I don't know. Ray Richmond might have covered radio too. I don't know. Yeah. So, but yeah. What were you covering at the Daily News in 1980? Uh, well, I was started as an editorial assistant. And, uh, you know, I did do some, like, they allowed me to do some record reviews and everything. Uh, but, yeah, uh, mostly just like answering phones, filing photos and stuff. Let's see. Here. Well, one, keep, talk amongst, amongst yourself. I'm not going far. That's fine. Let's, let, let's see here. Bring out your uh, Susie if you got it as well. Oh, I, I oh you want to you want me to pull my Susies out? Wow! If it's filed alphabetically, uh, it's yeah, easy I to could find. do that. I could do that. Let's see here. Let's see. Does it go that far to eighty six? Maybe not. Very early. Uh, oh, it's the I'm, I'm going the wrong way. The later stuff is. Uh, I don't think it, I might have stopped. <laughs> it's my very early clipbook. That doesn't. Uh, oh, uh, oh, lions and ghosts from uh, Bam Magazine. That's eighty six. Nice. Okay, so that's what I was doing. March uh, eighty six. Thumbs up, thumbs down. What did we give lions? The lion. It was. It was a feature. It was oh. a feature. I had no idea that uh, one of the guys would marry and have children with Elvis's uh, uh, daughter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Lockwood. Yeah. yeah. Meat Puppets Live at the Music Machine for Band Magazine. The best. That must have been a that was must have been a good show. Did Black you... Flag Live for uh Band Magazine. Right. Wow. Mm. What else? No daily news stuff. There's got to be some daily news stuff. Bang bang. When Bam was was this just freelance that you were doing in 86 or yeah. what? Okay. Yeah. So you had, you had two, so you, you wrote for Bam and for daily news in the 86. Uh, I, I guess I was freelancing for, uh, Bam and, uh, daily news was the, the full-time job out of college as an editorial assistant. Just out of curiosity, how much did Bam pay you? Cause Bam was a free magazine. I remember picking it yeah, up. Yeah, I can't remember uh, how much they paid, but it probably wasn't a lot. Uh, I remember that. I think that magazine, the first magazine that I wrote for was called Action Now, which was a, uh, a I've mentioned before, it was sort of like a spin up. Well, it was skateboarder. It evolved into something else when skateboarding kind of went downhill. Uh, pardon the un. <laughs> intentional fun uh, uh they they combined uh like an action sports magazine so it was skateboarding and snowboarding and bmx and stuff like that and i did record reviews for them and i think they paid like 50 bucks 
for a, for a short review. I don't know how many words, but that that's, was the first first paying gig. Yeah, that's a that, that's not too bad. That pays. Yeah, for it was was yeah. okay. Yeah, you can fill up your tank, uh, your Carmen Ghia for 15 bucks, I bet. Yeah, yeah. And I was already getting, you know, I, I like I may have mentioned before, I got into this whole racket just to get free records. Yeah. <laughs> and that was uh, the back to murmur. I did get that from the Sundial newsroom. I it, it arrived there. It wasn't addressed to me. It was probably addressed to the entertainment editor, which I don't think I was at that point, but I grabbed it and uh, I didn't real realize uh, they came out the same day, but I guess the Violent Femmes album did come out that very same day. Yeah, I did see. I, I did fall, you know, I fell in love with actually listening to Murmur, but I remember that Violent Femmes album and looking, pulling out the lyric sheet at CSUN in front of the bookstore, like between classes and reading the lyrics. And I'm like, I love this band and I hadn't heard a note yet. <laughs> I just, just based 